first of all, ew, I don't want to socialize. Second of all, wait a minute, I can do research. I have pretty much been writing ever since I was a kid, which means that growing up, I spent most of my childhood hunched in front of a laptop, staring at a computer screen and therefore blinding my eyes. It would be very fitting, now that I'm getting back into writing, to have glassesusa.com sponsor this video. They offer over 6,000 styles of eyeglasses and sunglasses, including in-house brands and designer brands like Ray-Ban and Gucci. You can find pretty much any style and any color. A complete pair of glasses with both the lens and the frame starts only at $30. Free basic prescription lenses are included in every frame. There's a great offer for your first pair when you sign up for glassesusa.com that I will have in my description. You can add any type of prescription to almost any type of lenses, including sunglasses, which is very relevant because the newest glasses that I got from their site is actually sunglasses. The one that I'm wearing right now is called the Barbara. I got it because I realized I don't have any brown glasses, so I wanted to have some librarian chic going on. But for the others, I can say that I finally have sunglasses that are prescription because I've never really had them before. This this is the Amelia E. Hartwell. The glasses are basically a chic round frame. I also changed things up with the Atoto Altevi. These are round aviator sunglasses that are in a gold color. They have a double bridge and adjustable nose pads, so I can feel extra bougie. These are the Ray-Ban 4237. So the frames here are clear, but if you look to the side of the handles, they actually have a blue streak of color. And lastly, when I can't decide whether I want regular glasses or sunglasses, I can have both with the Revel Duality. I picked the ones where it's blue here but then on the inside they have a red color that matches my jacket and you can see here that there is a clip on for you to clip on the sunglasses part whenever you want if you want to get new glasses check them out otherwise let's head on to the rest of the video I am in Houston Texas I'm here for a few days for a business trip I realized that this is actually a good opportunity for me to try to document writing my novel one of my resolutions this year is to rewrite a novel that I wrote five Five years ago. This became my resolution because half a year ago I went on my first solo trip to Portugal. And that was during a time in my life where my life was just so hectic because I was so caught up in my work life and doing all these side projects just to add to my portfolio in order to advance my career. It was my first time ever traveling alone and I think because I didn't have anybody to distract myself with and I didn't have any work to distract myself with, that was the first time in a long time that I had the time and space to myself to just let my brain wander. I wasn't thinking about work or my job or getting my next promotion or the next update for my portfolio or even my next YouTube video or anything like that. Instead, I was just thinking about that story that I wrote five years ago and I was thinking about the characters and the relationships that they have with each other and certain plot points that I wanted to emphasize. I think that when your mind drifts to something like that, it's kind of a sign that this is something that you want to do deep down without the influence of what's practical or what you should be doing as an adult. I used to write a lot when I was in high school. I'm going to insert a clip where I show all the books that I've printed out. These are all the books that I wrote back in high school and kind of like in my early days of college before I stopped writing. This was the first novel that I ever wrote called Destroying Alice. It was a paranormal adventure story. I literally printed out everything including the title page, my own name right here. I wrote this back in 2010. Holy shit. It has been <gasps> 10 years ago. Oh my god. <laughs> what the Baby Cindy wrote such a shitty story. And then this was my second novel that I wrote in the next year. I wrote two fantasy books, a couple of shorter stories, but this is like my own secret collection that I just printed for myself. I never actually published it. I just wanted it in a hard copy. However, the story that I am writing in this vlog, I actually never printed it out. So this is a story that has yet to turn into a book. And maybe this time it won't be like a fake book like this. Maybe it'll be an actual book that people get to read I don't know. When I started working as an adult, I stopped doing that because I thought I should focus more on design and being an art director and just being an adult or whatever. I didn't 
touch writing ever since then. So this year, I've been planning on getting back into the habit of writing again. Here's the thing, it is about the middle of January and I still haven't touched my novel yet. I think part of me is just afraid to look back at that first draft because I know it's gonna be a piece of shit. The thought of like salvaging whatever crap I wrote back then is daunting to me. That's why I keep on procrastinating. My hope is that I will vlog myself this week so that I can hold myself accountable. You will be watching my journey. So if I obviously don't do well, then it's gonna look fucking embarrassing. What else is new on my channel though? The biggest challenge for me is just gonna be able to make the time to work on my novel. I was hoping I would have some free time during this week, but I actually took a look at my agenda. The earliest that the event times end every night is 8 p.m. And I'm like, what the fuck are we doing till 8 p.m.? Part of these nightly events are socializing with other people. That's just gonna make me so tired that I don't even know if I'll be in the right headspace to write. But those are always gonna be excuses that I'll make every week anyway. Every week I keep on thinking, oh, I should write again. I should write when I get home. I should write this weekend. But then I end up being so tired when I get home from work or during weekends, I sleep in till the afternoon because I'm depressed. I sleep in in order to avoid doing things. It's some deep psychological reason, but I'm not ready to tap into that yet for this week. What I'm going to do is outline. Moving forward in the second draft, I really want to make sure the story is more cohesive and that it makes sense. I want to be able to outline every single thing that happens in each chapter so that I have a clear idea of what exactly I'm writing. The first draft was like a stream of consciousness where I just threw every idea and hopes for the best. And now I have to try to make sense of it and try to pluck gold out of the shit mountain. I, I don't know if that was a real metaphor. See, I'm already so <laughs> out of touch with writing. So I wanna be realistic and say that this week, I probably won't get to actual writing. I don't know if this writing vlog will be a continuous video series because number one, I don't know if people will care enough. Two, I feel like I work at such a snail pace when it comes to my personal projects. I'm not the type of person that can have like weekly writing vlogs because a lot of the weeks, I'm just a piece of shit and I don't do anything. Obviously, I cannot share what my novel is actually about because I want to keep the actual synopsis and the plot to myself. However, I will say that the working title is Slumberland. I'm aware that it is a shitty title. We gotta work with what we have, okay? It is a fantasy novel, it is a standalone, and it is young adult. The main reason why I am doing an outline is because I have made three pretty big changes that will affect the entire story. The first change that I'm gonna make, there will be dual timelines. In the first draft, I wrote a pretty linear timeline. You follow the main character the entire time. But when I thought more back on the story, there's just so much that has happened in the past with certain other characters that you don't find out until way later towards the end. And I felt like I was risking the trap of having a huge info dump towards the end where you might be intrigued about what's going on throughout the story because you don't know as much as the main character does. And then you have to like learn everything towards the end when everything gets revealed and I just didn't want to fuck with that. My solution for this is dual timelines. One timeline will be present day where you follow the main character. Another timeline will be 100 years in the past where you follow a few of the other main characters. So when you read the chapters that take place 100 years ago, you'll get more context clues about why certain things are happening during present day or why certain characters in present day have certain motivations or do certain things because they're are some characters from 100 years ago that are still here. Why are they still here? I can't tell you. The downside is that these are basically extra chapters that I have to write from scratch because in the first drafts, I only wrote present day. I never wrote anything from a hundred years ago. Now I gotta go back and think, okay, what the fuck happened way back when? But I think it's good for me because it makes me really try to formulate the character's entire story and just make them more like actual people. Cause in the first draft, I'm like, who is this bitch? We don't know her. The second major change that I'm doing is that I am gender reversing two of the main characters. Originally, the story was about a male thief with his younger brother. I have decided to make it about a female thief with her younger sister. I've also decided that her name will be Corin because I was talking about the story to my friend Melody and I was like, I don't know what I should name her now that she's gonna be a girl. And Melody was like, oh, I always thought Corin would be a nice name. The younger sister's name is also gonna be Ellie. And that is because I actually got a message on my curious cat who said that my main 
character should be named Ellie. And I was like, mm, Ellie is too feminine for the main character, but I can give that to her younger sister. Corin and Ellie used to be boys in the first drafts, but now I have made them girls. And the reason why I did that is because when I was in Portugal, I kept on thinking about the themes that I really wanted to emphasize in the story. And I realized that it would be more impactful if I made the main character and her sibling young girls instead. I don't want to reveal too much about the themes, but to explain it very vaguely, I just think that young girls have systematically and disproportionately face unique circumstances and unique trauma throughout their lives. Men and young boys definitely face trauma too, but I'm just saying that there is a disproportionate level of specific types of trauma and mental health issues that a lot of young girls go to because we just get socialized differently. And actually stuff that I deal with, I don't know why I made the main character originally a guy. Maybe that's just how my brain always defaults characters to be. But I was like, well, this could definitely be a girl's story. Like, why not? So I was like, fuck it. I'm gonna make them girls. Here's the thing though. Originally, when I wrote the story, there is some kind of hinted romance between the main character, originally a man, with another female character. And now that I am making the main character female, doesn't that mean they're gonna be gay? <gasps> man, I... I guess they're gonna be gay, shit. I did not plan this at all when I wrote the first draft. I have a very heteronormative mindset. Whenever I think about a story, and this is very obvious when I look back on all the books that I wrote, it's always about a main male character and a main female character, and they go on some kind of adventure together, but then they form this really strong relationship that can be interpreted romantically. I do that for every single book that I write, and I did the same thing for this story. And now I'm like, wait a minute, why can't they be gay? At first I was kind of unsure about the implications of a straight author writing about a gay relationship because I was like, oh, is this really my place to write about this kind of stuff? But I realized, first of all, there's tons of straight female authors that write gay male and male relationships. There's nobody that's doing that for female and female relationships. I will be the pioneer for all my straight allies out there. No, I'm just kidding. But actual reason why I think I will be okay moving forward with this is because I just wrote it originally as a guy and a girl and I'm not really changing anything about their relationship now that I've just swapped out one of the genders. I'm not approaching this in a biased way because they're still the same couple. They just happen to be the same gender but that doesn't really affect anything. I want to view the characters as compatible with each other because of their personalities and their stories and not because of their gender. That is what I'm going to do moving forward it's gonna be girls 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 everywhere literally because there's actually there are two male characters but they don't really appear that often in the book all of the main characters are women again this was really not planned it just happened to be that way here we are 2020 is the year where misandry is gonna take place the third major change i don't know if this is like a major change it's more like just something that i am supposed to work on for a second draft anyway i really want to better develop some of the characters characters. Namely, I want to develop one of the other main characters. Her name is Amelia. Even though I haven't looked back at my first draft yet, I know that she is a bland ass bitch. I feel like I had a good grasp of what Corin would be like, but with Amelia, I think I just wrote her to be such a flat character. I also feel like when it comes to characters who are royalty in a story, in this case, Amelia is a princess, they usually are on two sides of the spectrum. On one side, you have a very feminine, and girly type of character and then on the other side you have like a tough girl character who's like a tomboy and spunky and she will talk back at you because she's a feminist and she really wants you to know that she's a feminist it's like two extreme sides of the spectrum and I don't want her to be on either side I want her to be in the middle and just be like a normal fucking person that you could see some part of yourself in I had the same problem writing the younger sibling so Ellie is gonna need a revamp in her personality as well. It's a similar issue with Amelia. They are way too fucking positive. I definitely don't know how to write kids because the younger sibling is supposed to be kind of like a foil to the main character because the main character is like, oh, the world sucks. And then the younger sibling is like, oh my god, there's still so much hope in the world because I'm young and naive. And it was just very surface level. So I want to make sure I add a bit more depth to the character and also make sure that she's likable. I think it's hard 
hard to make kid characters likable, but that might just be my personal bias because I don't give a fuck about kids. So when I read a book with like a little sister or a little brother, I'm like, man, fuck them kids. I don't give a shit. And now I got to deal with that problem if I'm going to write about a kid character that I want you to care about. I'm definitely going to tone down those two characters because they are too positive and I realize that I cannot write positivity authentically because that is just not who I am as a person. I'm going to tone them down and I'm going to make sure that they just act like fucking normal girls instead of like sunshine and rainbows all the time. And I also don't want to make them too angsty either because then that's just one other extreme. I want to find like a good middle ground because I want them to be well-rounded. So that is the basic setup. I have my first full day in Houston tomorrow. I don't know how much free time I'll actually have. I will try as best as I can to make some progress. All right, see you tomorrow. Okay, here are a few clips from the first day of my stay in Texas. The context for this trip is that Twitter had a giant global summit where offices from all around the world got together in one convention center to figure out how can we all operate as one team and how can we all align on the company values and mission even though we're all so geographically spread out. The opening ceremony had offices from all around the world do performances to represent their culture, which I thought was really cute. Jack, who is the creator of Twitter, also showed up to give his opening speech. Hard as yet, but you should have known better. <laughs> Does Twitter have any engineers? We have engineers here. There's one. This is a very valid point. What do we do? Well, a lot of the talk was focused around how to use Twitter as a way to help people and promote unity. And one of the cases we turned to was Hurricane Harvey. That actually happened in Houston less than three years ago. People in Houston who needed help tweeted their location so that they could be rescued from their homes. We invited the mayor and the family to come speak about their experience using Twitter for good. And it was really nice hearing their stories. This was the kind of experience that we want Twitter to be used for so that it can benefit people's lives rather than the opposite. We also invited Jamila Jamil and other Twitter influencers where they got to talk about how they approach Twitter and try to use it more impactfully. I personally think Jamila should take a break from Twitter, but you know, that's a whole other conversation altogether. In between breaks for these talks, I tried to hop back into outlining my novel in the spare time that I had, but as you can imagine, the day was pretty busy, especially when they announced the nighttime activity for our first day where we were invited to the International Space Station. I finally made it back to my hotel room, but I only had have less than an hour before I have to take the shuttle to our opening event, which I think is just some fancy party that won't end until 10 p.m. So it's fine. It's fine. I, I need to socialize anyway. That's This is good for me. That's what normal people do. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I do want to update though that when I was on the plane flying here yesterday and a little bit during my breaks today, I had brought my laptop with me. So I was able to jot down some of the story notes that I already had in my head. So I have the prologue and the first two chapters outlined. And by outlined, I mean I just have a bullet point vomit of thoughts of what's going to happen. This is a brand new chapter that I'm writing that wasn't included in the original draft. Originally, it was about a dude who is now trapped underground because he tried to find his younger brother who is now missing. I wanted to start off into the action right away because that's supposed to be what you do, but I felt like there weren't enough emotional stakes here because why should we care that this main character is looking for their sibling? Why should we care that the main character is about to die? Like, who gives a fuck? So I kind of felt like it was important to establish the main character and their relationship with their now sister in this new draft. The opening line for chapter one is this. The last words Ellie screamed to me before she disappeared were, I hate you. They had a little fight. The main character thought she was just being a brat, but lo and behold, three days have passed and the bitch still isn't back. So now she's like, fuck. So it's going to elaborate a little bit more about their family situation. Why is only the two of them living together instead of their parents? As she's going to wander around the kingdom to look for her sister, that's also going to establish some of the environmental aspects of the world in present day, which basically is super shitty. Like these bitches be living in poverty. And that way, by the time she is stuck underground about to die, the stakes are a little bit higher, you know? That way you feel kind of bad for her because then it's like, damn, she might not see her sister again because either her sister is dead or she's going to die or maybe they're both dead. The end. What if I did end it like that? Like it was just one chapter. She tried to find her sister, never made it out. 
the end. That would make my life so much easier, but unfortunately, there is much more to the story. Today, I actually finished the outline for chapter two during my breaks. Chapter two shows what happened 100 years ago. This is another brand new chapter that I have to write from scratch. Now, the weird thing is, on my last break at work today, I jotted down notes for a scene where she's coloring in all these dots and then connecting the dots because she's making up new constellations. And then I went to the last event for my workday where it was announced where our opening party would be. And it turns out that the opening party is going to be at the space station in Houston. So aside from like the food and the drinks, there's actually going to be some exhibits that talk more about like the space program, what they study over there. And then that got me thinking, first of all, ill, I don't want to socialize. Second of all, wait a minute, I can do research because I remember from the first draft, there was actually a chapter where later on in the book, the characters get to explore this constellation filled void. I can't elaborate any further, but it gets like really trippy. They're basically floating through an imaginary space. It's kind of like getting high, except they're not high. They're just in a fantasy world. But what I'm going to do is I will try to write as much as I can and continue outlining before I have to go to the opening event and I'm going to try to see it as research. So that's the plan. Basically, I'm going to go to a social event and instead of socializing with other people, I'm going to use it as an excuse to do research on a novel. That is the plan. I'm aware I sound like a loser for doing that, but I don't care. Let's go. here because the actual footage of my entire trip is too long to fit into one video. So this will just be episode one and I'll get around to edit the second part sometime later. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and I hope you unsubscribe.